This is the greatest season of your lives. I want to continue to say that and prophesy that to you until you are filled with such excitement for every dawn of the new day. You wake up every morning saying and prophesying something great is going to happen. Something incredible is going to happen. The word says, says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So welcome to everyone that's viewing. I'm glad you joined me tonight. We've been talking about prophecy and the influence and the power and the relevance of prophecy and how it affects change and what it is, what it does, and how we bring things and times uh, into their season. And the word says that all things are done in their season. And I left off speaking with you uh, last uh, teaching about time is an event. Uh, when we act upon the Word of God, we actuate a time. Uh, again, God referenced the day of Noah's obedience in building the ark as in the day of Noah. To God, that time was the day of Noah. And what does that mean? When Noah did something in obedience to the prophetic Word of the Lord, God spoke to Noah and He told him, uh, there's a rain coming, a big rain, unlike anything you've ever seen before. And uh, the word says that Noah prepared the ark to the saving of eight souls, by which God, again, uh, refilled or re-inhabited uh, the earth with the creation that he had made. Prophecy is such a powerful influence in creating and recreating, because prophecy, the word says, is not man's idea. It's not by the will of man. It's by the will of God. And prophecy has such influence to direct, to empower your life, but it also does something else. It encourages you uh, with a spirit of uh, hope and, and longing for God to do something. And the more confident you become in the prophetic anointing, uh, the more things prophetically happen. And the question would be, well, how do we do that? You continue to speak and declare the word of the Lord. This is a day God's made. I rejoice. I'm glad in it. Something great is going to happen. The word of the Lord is in my mouth, and I desire the word of prophecy for my life. God, I hear your voice. You, we don't speak uh, in uh, if, ends, or buts. It's affirmative. I hear your voice. I'm your sheep, and I'm going to follow your direction. What you, when you speak, I can hear you. You're always with me. You're always leading me. You're always guiding me. I like the 23rd Psalm where it says, Only goodness will follow me all the days of my life. That's a prophetic word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And God promises we won't want for any good thing. But doubt is a robber. A lot of times people blame the devil for robbing. Uh, but the only thing the devil robs the church of is their time and attention when you blame him for things that he may not even be doing in your life. But when you acknowledge God in all His ways, He directs your steps. Let your words be filled with prophecy. Uh, we're maturing over these uh, last couple of nights into a prophetic sphere of prophetic influence, prophetic insight. God teaches us by His Word. He reveals, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were created by Him and through Him. And without him, not anything was created. We're talking about the word of God. When God spoke again in Genesis, uh, he declared, 1-3, he said, let there be, and there was. God has given us that power. He's given us his word. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him having your eyes and heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which you have been called. And that's what we're talking about. We're born again by the, the blood of Jesus Christ. We're resurrected by the glory that raised him from the dead. He gave us that life. He gave us his word. And Jesus said, I'm not here doing the will of a man. I'm doing the will of the Father. And Jesus' entire life was prophecy. He was the great prophet. And he said, what I have and what the Father has given me, he says, I'm giving it to you. And then he said something so powerful and profound that it still makes our head spin to this day. And he said, all these things you've seen me do, you're going to do. But greater things than these will you do because I'm going to the Father and he's going to send you the Spirit. 
And Jesus, what did he say about the Spirit? He said he's going to come into you and you're going to prophesy. He's going to reveal the heart of the Father. He's going to tell you of things to come. And again, I have to reflect on the impact that prophecy has had in my life. And I've watched and learned and grown in, in, in the world of prophecy because, again, I've been prophesying since I was a teenager and just watching all the incredible facets of God as He speaks and reveals His Word. And, and what is prophecy? Prophecy is God revealing His heart. Uh, prophecy is something that God already is and already knows, and uh, He's revealing that to us through what we refer to as the prophetic word. And what is that? Prophetic word is a seed. It's a seed that God puts in your heart when He creates you. Uh, the scriptures say in the, in the Psalms, David is talking about, it said, before before I was born, you knew me. You knew all my intricate parts. You, you knew me inside and out before I was all together and you called me. God has called you before you were put together in your mother's womb. God knew you. He knew your name. And there's something incredible and profound about knowing and believing you are a word of prophecy. How alive is prophecy? It's as alive as you are. How present is it? It's as present as you are. And what is prophecy? It is the heart and the mind of God being revealed. It's, it's God opening that door. Prophecy is like a repeat or a replay uh, when we hear it. It's already been in the heart of God. It's already been in the mind of God. He knows what He wants to do. I mean, what can you teach God? What can time tell God? Nothing. He is all time. He is the first. He is the last. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is all seasons, all time, at all times. And there is no expiration to the word or the will of God. But the power is that today we are recognizing the, the strength, the value, and the necessity of really being strongly connected to the prophetic word of God. Starting off by knowing, God, you speak to me because your word says so. If I'm filled with your spirit, your word says your spirit tells me of things to come. It reveals your heart. It reveals, and what, what is the future really, the future of God? It's the heart of God being shared with us. The, the, the thoughts of God are, are His. The Word says it, it, every secret thing belongs to God, but once it's revealed, Deuteronomy 28, 28, the secret things belong to God, but once they're revealed, what happens? They, are, they belong to you and I, and that's where we're at today. We are in a time of unfolding wonders Prophetically, God is lighting up this world with prophetic anointing, prophetic people, prophetic spirits. I'm telling you, we are walking into a season and a time, and we're there right now with everything that's going on. God has poured out His Spirit and the, the, the anointing of prophecy, whether you're a prophet or a prophetess or you, you have a gift of prophecy or, or you just know God speaking to you personally. It's a time where the highlight of the events of this time are going to be prophecy. It's a prophetic season. Jesus said it. He said in the last, where it says in the last days, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and everybody's going to begin to prophesy. And every, what does that mean? We're going to see the future God has laid out for us. We're going to begin to hear the heartbeat and the mind of God. When the word says, seek first the kingdom of God, it's not a place uh, or simply a place as we suppose because Jesus made that clear. He said, if they tell you the kingdom is here or there, he said, don't be deceived by that. He said, the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, on the inside of you. And God purposed his kingdom. And what is the kingdom of God? It's the mind of God. It's the heart of God. It's a will of God. And the heart and the mind of God is not just an idea or a thought. It's a place. It's a kingdom. It's a power. It's a dominion. It's an authority. And that power abides on the inside of you. And it will take you places that you wouldn't have imagined. It opens doors to you that you could have, have fathomed in the deepest recesses of your mind. Now, you know, I reflecting again on uh, a time in my life where God directed me and I, I spoke to you about when God saved me and the, the, that inner voice of God that couldn't be uttered but spoke so powerfully, so clearly and profoundly to me and changed my life. But there was another transition, another season in my life where I was uh, a young man traveling, just traveling all over. I'd throw my uh, sound equipment, my guitar in my car, my Bible, I'd take off and I'd go from one place to another and uh, God just opened doors and I'd preach the gospel all over. 
uh, the place. Every place God opened a door, I was there. And I'm telling you, I love to prophesy. I, I found the heart of prophecy. When the word says desire more than anything to prophesy, I did. And it began to manifest over and over and more and more in my life. And I realized that that scripture wasn't just something thrown out there for someone that may want it. It was God baiting the passion of our heart to hear him so clearly. We could not only be led by it, but we could share the heart of God with other individuals. And that really is the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, seek the kingdom, seek the word, and it will, you'll be, it will be found of you and I'll reveal to you. But I remember one day I was driving uh, and I was always headed somewhere to preach the word. A uh, young guy full of energy, still have a lot of energy, still a young guy. And uh, God spoke to me one day. I was headed, um, I was actually headed, uh, I believe I was headed west and God wanted me to go east. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, there is someone, I'm driving the car, I'm by myself. God speaks to me and he says, there's someone I want you to meet. And I thought, okay. And God said, turn the car around and head back east. And he told me where to go. And he just said, there's someone I want you to meet. And I knew when God said that, it was more than I heard with my spiritual ears. It resonated in me that your life is about to change. I'm about to open another door uh, to you. I'm about to reveal myself to you in another way. So I went to a church, a uh, pastor was ministering, and uh, he called me out. And he gave me one of the most profound, accurate prophetic words I've ever received in my entire life. And when he was finished, uh, he asked me to go and preach in his church. So I'm like, wow. This is the guy God wanted me to meet. It's a, a new open door. But I, it, as amazing it was, I knew, as, as amazing as it was, I knew there was something more. There was something else. And uh, so I went and I preached in his church. And uh, this beautiful young blonde walked up to me, uh, was introduced to me by her father. And her dad um, said, this is my daughter, Donna, which is now my wife. And uh, he said, I want you to meet her. And I knew that's what God told me he wanted to show me. That's who God wanted to introduce me to. That's who God wanted me to meet. And uh, we've been married now going on 41 years uh, in just uh, next month. And it's been the most incredible journey. And it was a prophetic word from God that led me to the most incredible, amazing, beautiful wife on the planet that just lit up my heart and has been an encouragement to me from the, the day I met her to present day. And uh, I remember shaking her hand and I remember the word that I said to her. And the word I said was, bless. <laughs> not, a, not, a, not, a, not a big conversation. And uh, her dad invited me to speak in a, in a meeting. Uh, it was a youth meeting at the time. And uh, God just united us. And uh, we went together for about two years. And then I said, would you? And she said, I would. And we said, I do. And here we are today. And I thank God for his word. He leads you in the way you should go. He'll show you who your spouse is. Uh, he'll show you what your future looks like. He'll open the doors of your mind. Now, what's amazing about God is he doesn't necessarily show you everything all at once. But he, again, as he did with Moses, go down to, to, to Egypt and go to Pharaoh and tell him. And as you speak, I'll put the words in your mouth. I'll be with your mouth. And God is with your mouth. He was with mine. And if he's with mine, he'll be with yours. Uh, it was a few years later before we had our first child and God spoke to me. And I'm sharing, these, I'm sharing these experiences of my own to tell you that I have lived a life. I'm a witness and a testimony to the prophetic word of the Lord. And uh, Donna and I had been married a few years. And God, we uh, actually, we had been married quite a few years, probably about 12 years. Um, and the Lord spoke to me one night and he said, lay your hand on the child. Well, we didn't have a child. And the only one that was beside me was my wife. And I'm thinking, we don't have, what child? And the Lord said, lay your hand on your wife and lay your hand on the child. So I uh, just put my hand on my wife and I said, bless her, Lord. Well, what God told me to do is he said, bless the child. And so the next morning I got up and I said to, to Don, I said, uh, you're pregnant. And she said, no, I don't think so. And I said, I said, you're pregnant. She said, no, I, I don't think I'm pregnant. I said, yeah, you're pregnant. So uh, we were there ministering. We went home. Uh, she took a pregnancy test, and guess what? <laughs> she was pregnant with our firstborn. Uh, and God told me 
something that I wasn't ready to hear. And he told me something that I hadn't anticipated or even expected that God would tell me that. I thought my wife will tell me when she's pregnant. She's going to say, I think I'm pregnant. She's going to tell me. God will lead you in a way. And this is what I knew. God wanted me to bless my daughter before she came out of the womb. God wanted me to prophesy to my daughter before she ever breathed uh, oxygen out of the womb. God will lead you in the way that you should go. He'll tell you what to do because when you're obedient to the Word of God, when you listen to what God has to say, He can keep you from a lot of hardships, a lot of difficult times. Hear and heed the voice of the Lord. God is speaking. And here's my question. Do you have the heart to hear the voice of God. He will lead you. He will guide you. He'll wake you up in the middle of the night. He'll show you dreams. He'll show you visions. I came here, I'm, I'm preaching to you or sharing, teaching with you from California. I am here because God gave me a dream, showed me a home, showed me where I was supposed to go, what I was supposed to say, what I was supposed to do, the place I had never been before, and it unfolded exactly the way I saw it. It looked exactly the way I saw it in my dream. He said, the Spirit of the Lord will come on you. He said, in the last days, you're going you're gonna to have dreams. You're going to prophesy. You're, you're going to see visions. The anointing spirit of prophecy is alive in the world today. And I prophesy right now that there is such a great outpouring in the earth that nations are going to open their hearts. Nations are going to open their ears. God, by His Spirit, is going to take our economy and turn it upside down, turn it around. And there's going to be such a surplus in our world because of the fear that has been and the panic that has overtaken the earth that people have been so reserved in their buying, so reserved in, their, in, in, in what they have, their product. They have stored up their barns. There's going to be so much reserve as it was after the famine uh, in the day of the prophet that you're going to be able to buy things for half the price that you're paying today. All that to say this, God is doing something that's going to bless you if you heed the word of the Lord. Don't be afraid of what man says. Don't listen to the news and think that that's the future. Listen to the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord is a sure word of prophecy. The word of the Lord is yes and in him, amen. Our economy, I call it blessed of the Lord. Everyone that has a heart to hear the voice of God and, and believe the word of the Lord and cling to the prophetic anointing of God, you're going to walk in a season of blessing and abundance. You're not going to be stripped of your, 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 your blessings and your future and your freedom. God is liberating this generation. He's liberating the nations into what He said. There's going to be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when God speaks, when the Lord delivers His Word, great things happen. Great things take place and God is revealed. And the nations will know that there is a God, the one and only God, who reigns and rules in the earth and in the hearts of men and women. And He's going to open up your daughters and your sons and your grandsons and your granddaughters mouths and he's going to prophesy through them listen to what they have to say God is speaking to us in this generation this is the word and the season and the hour of the Lord this is the outpouring of God's spirit and God's power and God we give you praise for your word Lord we thank you for your intentions towards us. Your thoughts towards us are so good and so many that we couldn't possibly even count them all. We, we couldn't even consider how good you are, Lord, how present and powerful you are with us. And Father, for it, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a shout. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, now in these last days, God will speak to us, the word says. Now in these last days, God will speak to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he created the world by or through. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, of God's nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. God literally upholds. Today, when I say this is the day God has made, this is the scripture. Today didn't just show up and you didn't just wake up today. God woke you up with purpose. God woke you up with intention. God woke you up by the word of his power. 
and the scriptures, the word of God says that everything is literally held together by the prophetic spoken word of God. The universe, the earth that spins on its axes, the seas that do not go beyond the borders of the sand whereby God set the boundaries. Everything is orchestrated by the perfect will of God. You may have heard that we live in an imperfect world. The world God made is perfect. There are people with imperfect intentions, people with nefarious and evil plans, but the earth that God made, He has blessed. And the prophetic word for this generation is to bless the earth that God has made. It will yield up its treasures, its secrets, its mysteries. God's going to give us treasures and mysteries, healing for the nations. There is a revelation whereby God is going to heal the, the suffering and the weak. There was a time God said, take the figs and put it on the chest of Hezekiah and God God's going to heal and raise him up. The word of the Lord is sure. And what I want you to feel tonight is the intensity of God's anointing, God's spirit and God's power. We are not going to escape until the word of the Lord is poured out in all the earth and you are a part of that word today. You're listening today because God has moved your heart to hear a word of prophecy. You're listening today because God has nudged you and said, listen and hear what this man has to say. Listen to what the prophet of the Lord says to the generations and to the nations. God spoke through Elijah the prophet. He spoke through Elisha the prophet. He spoke through Jeremiah the prophet. He spoke through Jesus Christ. He spoke through David. He spoke through Paul. And he spoke through the disciples when they were in the upper room. And what did he do? He spoke the word through them, and the word was prophecy. And what is that? What is going to take place? What is going to come to pass? Exceeding great and joyful times. Times of joy, times of rejoicing, times of revival, times of restoration. God is going to take the old things and he's going to make them new. This is not a time to be afraid. This is not a time to doubt. This is not a time to wonder what's going to happen to me. This is a time to prophesy. Prophesy this is the greatest season of my life. The blessing of the Lord, they pursue me. We sing a song all the time. The favor of God is after you. He's pursuing you. No doubt it's true. And all you have to do is stop and just worship Him. And that's all you have to do. Stop and worship Him. And the word of the Lord will fill your mouth and you will utter things that cannot be uttered by you without the Spirit of God quickening you. He'll tell you what's going to take place. He'll calm your heart. He'll soothe your mind. He'll give you peace that surpasses your understanding. He'll save your family. He'll heal your body. He will quicken your mind. He will remove depression and sadness from you. He'll wipe away the tears from your eyes. That same Spirit, that same power that we read about in the Kingdom of God is that power that resides in you and it wants to preside in you. It wants to take dominion over your life. God spoke to Adam and he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to take dominion over all the world. Can you imagine looking at the world God had created and going, that seems like an awfully big call. But God did it through Adam by a prophetic word. And then God said, Adam, I want you to name, first of all, see all that I've made. See all the things, the, the birds that fly in the air, that which swims in the sea, that which walks on the earth, that which crawls on the earth. He said, I want you to name it. How could Adam possibly have named it? Because what God said to him, God didn't say, Adam, I want you to make up a name. God said, I want you to name them. I want you to call out their name. In other words, I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak by the word of prophecy. I want you to speak by the word of knowledge. I want you to tell me what this animal is. And God brought an elephant by, and Adam said, that is an elephant. And the word says, God says, that is the name thereof. God named the animals. God knew that an elephant was an elephant, and a lion was a lion, and a bear was a bear. But Adam didn't know until God put it in his heart. And the first days of creative power and taking dominion in the earth was when Adam began to speak by the Spirit of the Lord. He began to speak the word of the Lord. The world is created to live, to exist, to feed on the word of prophecy. And prophecy is the light of our minds. It's the instruction of our heart. It's, it's the peace of our mind. It's, it's the stability of our soul. It's the soundness of who we are. It confirms that God is with me. God is speaking to me. That's why Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they hear it and I call them out by name and I tell them where to go and I tell them what to do. 
I'm telling you, this is the greatest seasoning. This is the greatest day of awakening and revelation that we have known. We will testify. We will be witnesses and testimonies of seasons that will be talked about, of, of events and times and prophetic unfoldings that people will talk about for years and years and years to come. We aren't living in a troubled time. We are living in a prophetic time where the word of the Lord is what is going to call out the future and determine what is going to take place and how it's going to take place. And God's going to speak through His people. You know, the disciples weren't all prophets, but they all prophesied. And what is that difference? And what is the, that, what is the difference between a prophet and, and someone that has a gift of prophecy and someone that can prophesy? And, and how does that come into play? And what, how does it work? And how do, you, how do you know the difference? I'm going to tell you, uh, in the next service, next Wednesday. Uh, so I encourage you to join us for that. But I just want to say this to you. God is so present with you. And as he said to Moses, when Moses said, who are you going to send with me? He said, he said I, I, I'm slow of speech and, and I'm not eloquent at speech. And you're asking me to go speak a word. God's speaking to you tonight and he's telling you, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. You may not feel like you're, you are valuable enough or you've done enough right. And you got to remember, again, it's not by might, not by effort, not by your power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. And he said, I did it so you couldn't boast about yourself, so you couldn't get lost in yourself. But he said, my word is nigh you even in your mouth. And when God speaks, his word comes out of you. God has spoken. How can we but help and prophesy? How can we help do anything but prophesy the word of the Lord? Believe in your heart. How did people get healed in the day? How, how was the woman healed? She said within herself, she prophesied. Just as Adam prophesied and called out the animal's name, God gave him his spirit. God breathed the spirit of life into him and quickened him. And Adam had the mind of God. And as long as you trust the Lord, don't doubt God. Listen, I've said this many times. It isn't wrong to feel fear. Everyone has felt fear. But the problem is, is when you respond to it and you believe it and you live by it. Let the prophetic word of the Lord lead you as it led Adam when he called out the animals' names. He declared, this is a lion, this is a bear. And God says, whatever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. That was what God had created it to be. That same power is in us because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He just doesn't change. And his word is profoundly in your mouth. Believe in your heart. How did the woman get healed? She said in her heart, I know. I'm going to be healed. How do you prophesy? I know the word of the Lord is going to speak to me. I'm going to dream a dream. God's going to visit me in the night. He's going to show me a vision. How does, does this time of outpouring that Joel and Peter talked about make itself known? Same way the woman got healed. When we begin to believe this is that day. We're not waiting for signs. We're not waiting for wonders. The woman had lost, spent all that she had on physicians, was none the better. But the word says rather grew worse. But she said in her heart, she prophesied, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment, and when I do, I'm going to be healed. The words of prophecy are like the strings of your heart. It plays a melody that you can dance to, and it creates a symphony that changes your life. It, in, 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 it empowers you, it influences you, it inspires you, and God reveals his word to you. And once God's word is spoken, that thing he has spoken will come to pass. You're anointed to prophesy. You may not be a prophet, but you're anointed to prophesy. Uh, next service, uh, next teaching, I'm going to share with you the difference between a prophet and, uh, and those that prophesy and the anointing of prophecy and the, the next season of change that we're walking into. This is the greatest season of your life. I encourage you stay strong in the Lord and the power of His might and keep God's Word. And God's Word is going to keep you. Uh, I'm opening the offering for your support. Thank you so much for every one of you that have consistently supported and if there's some of you out there, you say, I've never really supported, I've never given, uh, you can go right there. Or the number is on your screen or actually how to text. It's very simple. Uh, we encourage you to be a part of PFC, Prophetic Fulfillment Church, and uh, let us hear your voice of yes and amen. God encourage you. God will bless you. God will fill you, as he said. Uh, come before me, bring an offering. And he said... Um, Given it shall be given, good measure, pressed down. You know the word, shaken together. I pray that God runs your seed over and God honor you according to your faithfulness and your giving. This is the greatest season of your life. Stay encouraged, stay excited, and anticipate the word of the Lord coming out of your mouth. God bless you. Go out with a prophetic shout.
See you next time.